Greetings. Welcome to the online or DVD uh, introduction to the Mulligan Concept course. My name is Rick Kroll. I'm a physical therapist and an accredited, accredited Mulligan teacher. I've been teaching with Brian Mulligan since 1996. Uh, I am an active clinician working in Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm excited to uh, be here to introduce this concept uh, through a, a, a digital media environment. This um, is not a hands-on course, but we certainly do uh, expect that you're going to benefit from this and be able to uh, utilize these techniques in the clinic come next week. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce to my far left is Brian Folk. Hi, I'm Brian Folk. I live in Southern California, and I uh, have been fortunate to run into Brian Mulligan a number of years ago, and I've been working in the Mulligan Concept Teacher Association since 1998 and I work full-time in an outpatient orthopedic setting in uh, California. And this is our mentor, Brian Mulligan, and we would like him to say a few words about this online course. And for the remainder of the course, we'll have Brian in and out of the, uh, the course at different times to uh, drive home some key points. Uh, otherwise, you'll be listening to both uh, Brian Folk and I take you through uh, the concept, the indications, contraindications, and uh, specifically the, the techniques. Brian yeah. Mulligan. Well, I'm Brian Mulligan. Of course, I come from New Zealand, which is a large island off the coast of Australia. Mm. And uh, I'm delighted to be involved in this presentation. I think we've got a lot to tell the world about our techniques. And uh, to have two guys like this with me um, presenting is, is, is an honour for me, not for them. It's an honour for me. Thank you. The only good thing that comes of all this is that I'm perhaps looking better in your presence than I would in a couple of <laughs> handsome film stars. But look, this is a serious presentation and uh, I, I'm just delighted to be involved and I just want to get cracking. Brian, um, tell us a little bit about your history and, 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 and how the concept developed and who some of your mentors were in this uh, journey of yours, shall we say? Oh, it has been a journey and a wonderful journey. My history, well, I qualified as a therapist in 1954. It's a mighty long time ago. You were 12 years old at the time? Yes, of course, a prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> and I went into practice as a physical therapist, and in those days we didn't have great skills. And we knew that we didn't have great skills, and we used to meet, and we wanted to know how to get better. And uh, my, I was influenced initially by, by uh, Carlton Boy, uh, not by Carlton Boy, I'm sorry, by dear old James Syriax, because his Jennifer Hickling came to New Zealand and taught us to examine and mm -hmm. do things to joints. And then as time passed on, Stanley Paris came to New Zealand and he introduced us to the work of Freddie Carltonborn. That prompted Mackenzie to go off to Europe and do what uh, uh, Born was doing. Matt comes back and we start getting Carltonborn to New Zealand to teach us and he taught us to manipulate joints. He he taught us handling skills, he taught us everything. I then did, in 1970, I did a course with Freddie in Helsinki and I went through the extremities. We'd never had anything to do with extremities. And when I came back, I thought I had all the answers. I could mobilize the spine, manipulate the spine. Now I could do all the extremities. And then in the mid 1980s, I'd been teaching for a few years because of what I'd learned. I, I came across mobilizations with movement and it all went from there. And we're going to discuss the history as we go along. But I, I, I've had a treasured life. And uh, I, I, perhaps I'd like to mention here that as numbers grew, I was teaching on my own, and as numbers grew, I had to help, have help. Right. And uh, you guys were coming along to courses and you were learning, you know, you, you were just fantastic. So we set up, and we have an exam, and we started to accredit teachers. And that's made a wonderful difference. And, uh, Anyone that's a teacher of mine is the person of the highest quality. I trust them. They've got the ability, with a couple of exceptions, of course. <laughs> but, no, no. So it's, teachers it's, not here just in the United States, but worldwide. Oh, right? worldwide. But I, I've had an incredible crew of teachers in the yeah, States, so they, and they look after me. But anyway, let's get on with this program, because we've got so much to offer. Thank you for the introduction. And we'll um, take a break here. And then as we come back, we'll move into uh, introduction of treatment principles. And you will see Brian Mulligan throughout this course on mobilization with movement.
this uh, concept is strongly rooted and its foundations are in evaluating the person for clinical signs and symptoms. We expect that the participant will fully do a subjective examination and through their subjective examination make a determination that manual therapy is indicated. Uh, once that is done, uh, a physical examination will be based on selective tissue tension. Uh, if you were looking at a particular joint, it's the therapist, you as the clinician, remembering your joint morphology, thinking about joint me mechanics. That will be very important as you learn these techniques. Brian, when you think about the evolution of the Mulligan uh, concept, how does it fit in with other manual therapy um, other manual therapy approaches that the clinician or watching might might know. Well, that's a good that's a good point. When I think about manual therapy, I think about manual therapy as an evolutionary eclectic approach. Mm -hmm. And there have been a number of key players over generations actually that are, have helped to contribute to our understanding of manual therapy and to codify how we apply manual therapy in the clinic. And some of that those key 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 folks have been instrumental. People like. Uh, uh, Freddie Kaltenborn, who was one of Brian Mulligan's main mentors, and he, he had a strong biomechanical analysis of joints, what kind of accessory motion coupled with what kind of physiological motion. And um, <clears throat> as you can see in the slide here, looking at, uh, uh, thinking about doing accessory mobilizations on individuals, you have a dynamic treatment plane. In other words, the, the direction of force that you're going to apply to do an accessory glide on a joint. And you're going to want to think about the convex concave rule of that joint, what side is convex, what side is concave, and how does that joint roll, spin, or glide as they move uh, through that motion. So we're going to want to think about where is that uh, concave surface and, and, and try to perform a glide that's going to be parallel to that concave surface to maximize movement accessory-wise with that with that joint as they are, are so that, that that is a foundation knowledge base that we expect that the uh, the viewer does have that they do understand that all um, synovial joints have an accessory glide and have a convex uh, concave relationship not all of them but some of them and that we treat also thinking about those in mind some things will be different within the concept in terms of glide directions but we still utilize that as a absolutely, condition. absolutely, and we'll, you'll find that that's going to uh, be true in a number of joints that we put our hands on in uh, using the Mulligan concept as well. Talk to us about Maitland. Maitland talked about you know irritability, signs and symptoms. Is that something that we it's, utilize? In this it's concept? huge, and, and a lot of folks out there have done a lot of Maitland work, and, and he gave us he helped us uh, um, quite a lot to, to really understand how joints move thinking about the irritability level of those joints. Right. How irritable is this person? Are they rolled up in a ball, whimpering in agony when you walk in the room? Are they a pain patient? Or are they the patient that comes in and they go, yeah, I just got pain right here. <laughs> are they just that little stiffness person that you can be more aggressive with day one? So how aggressive can I be with this person day one? It's and you've got a size side in your initial evaluation before you're going. Exactly. He also codified uh, uh, looking at accessory mobilizations, grade one through five. He also mm -hmm. looked at physio gave us tons of physiological movements, accessory mobilizations, right. and we can utilize all those right. things in the Mulligan concept as well. But we're going to throw it a little wrinkle by combining the th things up a little bit. Let's talk about uh, Maitland's concept of assessment and reassessment because in the Mulligan concept, that is an absolutely critical it's component. Absolutely critical <clears throat> when you, you prove the value of your technique. Right. It hurts when I do this. Okay, well you apply a glide to that joint. Now you do a, a treatment on that joint, whatever it might be, and then you reassess their, their comparable sign. Does it still hurt when I do this? Does it still hurt when I do my functional activity? Prove the value straight out of the gate. So assessment and reassessment is critical for, for that process. Other folks like Robin McKenzie made us think about some other core ideas that are really important, like repeated motions. The patient comes in, they go, well, I got this back pain and it's, it's going down my leg. And well, what makes it worse? Well, when I've been forward, I'll Hey, that that really hurts. Right. Oh, really? So what hap So what happens when you bend backwards? Oh, when I bend backwards. Hey, hey, that feels better. Well, let me get this straight. So you bend forward, it hurts more. You bend backward, it hurts less. Mm. Gee, I, I wonder what we should do with you. Let me think about this. A very simple direction of preference. Right. What direction abolishes the symptoms? What direction uh, uh, makes the symptoms worse? And we're going to use that in the Mulligan concept as well, with a little bit of a wrinkle there. 
He also made us think about peripheralization or centralization of symptoms. If you have a neck problem and it's just a local issue, you may have just symptoms locally. If it's a more significant problem, you may see symptoms going down the arm or into the hand. So you want to do technique that's going to centralize those symptoms, get it out of the periphery and more central. Uh, central uh, in, so if you were nature. to do a mulligan technique then and you were actually peripheralizing some symptoms, then that would be a... That would be a red flag. flag. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to want to head in that right. direction. So uh, we are <laughs> still building on some of the foundations of other manual therapy giants, if you will. Absolutely. And these are things that Brian learned in his practice as well. So, so if, if, if you think about where we've, where we've come from, we've, mm -hmm. we've, done, we've learned to do accessory mobilizations on a joint. Right. We've learned to wiggle joints. We've learned to do physiological mobilizations on joints. We've right. massaged joints. We've friction joints. We've done, or fric friction soft tissues. We've done all those kinds of things. So now we're going to take the next step here, and we're going to couple an accessory mobilization mm -hmm. with a physiological motion mm -hmm. together. So let's say they have pain when they, when they raise their arm up. They have a physiological they have a physiological motion that hurts, right. we're going to apply an accessory glide, couple it with that provocative motion in a way that's pain-free. And if we can find a way that's pain-free, we're going to do repetitions and, and, and try to restore that joint function. So the, so the key here is, is the essence of this approach is <clears throat> mobilization with movement. movement. So, so uh, combining passive, accessory with physiological. Right. Passive and that, movement and active movement combined. That was really quite absolutely. unique in terms of evolution of manual therapy. Uh, it, Exactly. So, Rick, what do, what do practitioners have to keep in mind when they want to apply a mobilization with movement intervention on an individual? What are the key concepts we need to think about? Right. Um, again, we trust that you as the clinician make the, the choice to, uh, first of all, conduct a subjective examination. You are going to decide about the level of irritability of your patient's conditions. There are certainly some uh, contraindications to manual therapy, and we trust that the viewer knows these. Looking at pain patterns, deciding whether you're going to treat pain or stiffness, and very often what comes to our clinic is the person that has both pain with movement and a loss of range of motion. So these are techniques, one, certainly you could use just for motion restriction, a stiff ankle, a stiff knee, a stiff shoulder, but as I just said, oftentimes it's the combination of them. Um, as uh, Brian mentioned, thinking about um, Maitland and Maitland's approach to evaluating patients was looking for what we call comparable movements or comparable signs. And that would be if I had a restriction in right rotation, I might, through my physical exam, find that, number one, I had a facet joint that I thought was hypomobile, wasn't moving very well. Well, we're going to treat that with a mobilization with movement. Uh, which we'll call a snag, and we'll talk about that later on. But from that point, then we're going to uh, reassess and look at actually that active movement, that comparable movement has to change. Um, we all know today outcome measures are very important in the United States here. Third-party payers want to know um, what's the outcome, how um, they want less treatment um, for less dollars, so to speak. So our outcome measures in this particular approach will be the immediate change in range of motion, change in pain. We expect to see that as you apply a, an MWM, you immediately see that you have an instant change in their range of motion. Um, Brian, why don't you take us through some of the assessment, reassessment um, concepts in this approach? Sure. So assessment, reassessment, like you say, is critical. You're going to, once again, you're going to look at providing an accessory glide, have them go through their provocative physiological motion in a pain-free fashion. If you identify that it's in a pain-free fashion, then you're going to do repetitions with overpressure and then reassess their provocative motion. It's all about function when we work in the clinics nowadays and everything's right. predicated on functional goals. Right. So find the functional activity that's bothersome to them, assess it, apply the technique, and then reassess that functional goal. And, and, and that leads right in toward, uh, toward, toward positive outcomes, positive reimbursement, all those sorts of things. So right. prove the value straight out of the gate.